Blue Sky Alternative Investments is an alternative asset manager with more than $700 million in assets under management, including private equity, private real estate, hedge funds and real assets. I'm John Treadgold and joining me today at the AS6 Investor Series is the company's founder and managing director, Mark Selby. Mark, welcome to FNN. Thanks for having me, John. Your first half results were strong compared to the previous period. What was behind the result? Yeah, look, I mean, we're a nine-year-old business now. We're starting to mature. The, the reality of our business is that the first half tends to be slower than the second. We get a lot of deal flow the second half through our private equity and venture capital. That drives more fees and more revenue and also often more performance as well for exits. So, so the first half was a great result for us. We, we would normally expect historically to break even around or around that um, and we obviously did better that this year. I think it's it's more relevant in terms of our overall development and our revenue growth was excellent. I've, you know, we've grown by more than double and that's to be expected I think given the tailwinds that we're experiencing across the business and the sector. And can you tell us about the launch uh, last June of the listed fund and how that has performed in terms of inflows and what it means for the company? Yeah, you know, it's a perfect structure for us. I mean, listed investment company and we're long-term investors so we need permanent capital and permanent capital allows us to then go and make great decisions uh, and stops people from making bad decisions with their own money, John. So, um, so LIC's worked really well. We're trading in a premium to NTA. Uh, it's an engine room, I guess, of alternatives. And we think that it will end up being the default uh, alternatives fund for private wealth, financial planners, self-managed super funds. They're very much at the, the wholesale and retail part of the market. And it gives them that diversity that they need across all the different asset classes that we're in. Really, really happy with how it's going. Uh, it's done everything we would have hoped. We deployed it quickly, which tells you we've got plenty of deal flow. And that's, I guess, reflected in our first uh, half result as well, because we're seeing that deal flow come through our own numbers. Now, Mark, can you give us a, a feel for the characteristics of alternative assets and how you manage liquidity? Yeah, I think it's an interesting question around liquidity. So, um, so we've got a great um, slide on our website which shows our investment returns, which we'll talk about later on, to 15.3%. And, and if you look at that slide, the least liquid assets are private equity and venture capital, and they've got the highest return. The most liquid are the hedge funds, and they've got the lowest return, still good returns compounding. So there's a, a really big price that you pay for liquidity. And I think mostly what alternatives are about is, is illiquids. So there is no liquidity. So assume there is none, the, 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 the liquidity will come from, from realisations, from exits, from liquidation events. Some of our assets have some liquidity, but the reality is, is that what we're really capturing in alternatives, at least in, for our business, is, is that illiquidity premium. So liquidity is something that we don't try to manage at all. In fact, we embrace illiquidity. The challenge is to make sure that you get a return for that illiquidity. And too often people have invested in illiquid assets and been caught and lost money. And I think what we're demonstrating over nine years is that we're pretty good at what we do. This alternative opportunities are, are gaining more traction in Australia. How is that um, pertinent in the current environment? I mean, alternatives themselves are, are a huge part of every portfolio. When we kicked off our business in 2006, it was about five or six percent of, of people's allocations were alternatives. And offshore it was 20. I mean, it wasn't, we didn't have to be a rocket scientist to work out that eventually Australia was going to, to start to play in this space. And it's now moved higher offshore, it's around 25%. Australia's now gone to 17, John. So we've seen that allocation increase. And then when you look at the list of managers in the alternative space, there just aren't very many to choose from because you need a long track record. And the longer our track record goes, doing 15%, clearly the more money will attract. So alternatives is going to play a much, much bigger part in everybody's portfolio, including self-managed super, institutions, right across the board. And so our job is to deliver those great opportunities in that space. And your focus on alternative investment opportunities has rewarded investors with a 15% return since inception. Mm -hmm. Which asset classes led the way? Well, private equities led the way because it's the least liquid. Um, they'll tell you that they're the smartest in the group, but that's not necessarily the case. I think, uh, you know, we've been able to find some good ideas as well, John. So, so our water fund, I think, particularly is globally unique. Um, we're playing in agriculture and playing successfully and profitably. Our hedge fund team have done a great job. They've done close to 10% compounding. That puts them in the top quartile globally uh, out of Australia, which is not easy to do. And, and of course, our real estate team, through the downturn, I think the really good thing they did is they caught the uptick uh, in the property market that we're all experiencing now, but they also worked really, really hard to preserve capital when it was tough. And I think what you see in those numbers is more a reflection of our ability to stick it out when it's tough than it is our ability to make great decisions on the way up. And you're the company's founder, um, and a lot of your staff have, have skin in the game, yep. uh, holding significant uh, equity in the business. Yep. How important is this to the success of Blue Sky? Well, I think, um, I think there's two parts to that. Uh, so, so absolutely skin in the game and alignment are critical. 
but owning Blue Sky shares is not enough. So if you're an investment manager at Blue Sky, we would rather you invested in your fund that you are asking people to invest into because it's illiquid. And so that means you're tied up. If you're in our stock only, then what that means is you can exit the company and leave and sell your shares when you feel like it. So it's not real, it's help, helpful for alignment, but it's not really gonna make them stick, John, and we want them to stick. So we prefer that they invest in their funds and then if they own stock as well, we'll either give them options as we continue on, or for the early guys, they've obviously got shares and, and they care deeply about the business and have been through the tough times. So we're starting to now enjoy some tailwinds, which is great. So it's critical. And, uh, and finally, what are the company's goals for the next 12 months? Well, the way we run the business is we, uh, we're a bit Chinese. So we do five year plans uh, and then six month bite sized chunks. So we have a view that people, if you give a 12 month budget, people will do nothing in the first six months and do it all in the second six months. So we do six month budgets. So, so for us, um, we think about the next six months. We've said we wanted to be in a billion under management, which we're through. Uh, we wanted to achieve an eight to $10 million impact, which we're on track to do. Um, so all those things we're doing in a 15% IRR. Looking ahead, we've said that in 2017, we would like to get through two billion in assets under management. We'd like to have a 20% IRR net, and then we think that will lead to a 20 million impact. So they're the things that we think about. And then beyond that to 2022, we're now building out that five year plan, but I think it's a plan that you really don't know what's possible until we get to 2017, because we may be ahead or behind on our goals. Uh, so I think you know, we've, we've built a, an opportunity now to build the biggest and best alternative asset manager in the country, but it's an opportunity. We've still got to deliver on it. Very good. Mark Selby, thank you for joining us on FNN. Thanks, John.